do you know that you are a gift from God? I was sitting here looking around thinking, there's no kids. It's really hard to be enthusiastic and tell a kid's story when there's no kids. So thank you. I'm very, very glad you are here. I'm going to tell a story today that I heard my son Sean tell. He's a pastor in Tantallon in Nova Scotia, and he told this story as a children's story last month. And I thought, that is a perfect story, and it fits with my sermon for today. So I'm going to tell a story. Oh, yes, more gifts from God. Thank you. And it's a totally made-up story. There are three main characters. There is a child who is in elementary school. Hello, darling. Uh, grades 1 to 6, and there is a child who is a high school student, grades 7 to 12, and there's a chaplain. And because this is a made-up story, you get to pick what the names are. So what's a good name for a kid in grades 1 to 6? What's a good name? Jacob? Is that what you said? Okay, Jacob. I have to write it down because I'm old and I'll forget. Okay, what's a good name for a kid in high school, grades 7 to 12? Come on. Thank you. I'm glad someone has a voice. Sam, okay. And what's a good name for a chaplain? Yes. Okay. Oh, we're cruising. All right. Okay, so... Jacob comes to school. He is such a wonderful kid. He's having a good day and he's just being himself. And he comes into the school and he's smiling and he's just enjoying life. And he immediately goes into the area where you take off your outside shoes and you put on your inside shoes. And then he heads down the hall a little way to the locker and he puts his bag in the locker and gets out the papers and the pencils and the books that he's going to need for the day. And he's just smiling at everyone and he's singing a happy song. Doing a happy walk as he walks down the corridor and he's just having a great time. Sam woke up late. The alarm didn't go off and Sam had told his science teacher that he was going to get to school early and help set up for an experiment that day in class. Oh, Sam came running into the school, went, put off his outside shoes, put on his inside shoes, didn't go to the locker, put the bag over his back, and he was just running down the hall. He'd sort out the bag in the locker later on. He had to get to the science room as quickly as possible so that he could help set up the experiment. And he was late and he didn't want to let the teacher down. And he's just running. Sam is not having a good day. As Sam runs down the hall, he's not even aware that Jacob is walking down the hall. Jacob's just singing his little happy song. Ooh, do, 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 do. And he's just walking down the hall enjoying life. And Sam comes running past and Sam's backpack hits Jacob, knocks him down flat on the floor. Sam has no idea this has happened and he just keeps running for the science room. And Jacob manages to look up just in time to see Sam running into the science room. So Jacob knows exactly who it is who has knocked him flat on the floor. Jacob's down there on the floor. His papers and pens have gone everywhere. They're sprawled all over the place. And Jacob's sitting there thinking, he doesn't care. He knocked me down. He hurt me. And he just kept going. Oh! That's not, he's mean. That's not good at all. And Jacob picks up all his papers and pencils and gets up and he's walking down the hall. His happy song, do, 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 is gone. He gets into class and he sits in class. <laughs> and he's now just really grumbling. Not fair. He shouldn't have hit me. He doesn't care about me. I got hurt. And he's just grumbling up a storm in the classroom. So he's not enjoying life at all. When it comes recess time, he goes out to recess and his friends say, hey, Jacob, you want to come and play ball with us? Because normally Jacob plays ball with them every day and they have a lot of fun. And Jacob looks at him. No, not today. And he goes over and he sits in the corner. 
and he's eating his sandwich and it doesn't taste as good as it normally tastes. And there's people all around him and he's, they love him and they're smiling at him and saying, hi, and he's missing it all. He's just, <laughs> just grumbling. He's just having a really miserable, sad day. It's so not fair. And it just stayed like that all day. And he went home. And the next morning in the school, Chaplain John, Chaplain John is standing in the entryway greeting everyone with a smile as they come in. And he sees Jacob come in and he gives him a big smile and a happy good morning. And he's expecting a big smile and a happy good morning in response because that's what Jacob does. Jacob always enters the school going, woohoo, do 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 do. Oh, yeah, having a good day today. But not this day. Chaplain John gives him the big smile and the big hello. And Jacob just walks past. And Chaplain John thought, oh, there's something seriously wrong here. This is not what Jacob does. So Chaplain John went over to Jacob and he said, hey, buddy, what happened? What's going on? And so Jacob told him the story that yesterday morning he was just walking down the hall minding his own business and then along came Sam and Sam tore past him and purposely pushed him to the ground and scattered all his stuff everywhere and kicked him and then kept going and went into the science classroom. Chaplain John says, whoa, that sounds really serious. Okay, I'm going to go and talk to Sam. So he goes and talks to Sam. Totally different story. Sam's going, really? I knocked someone over? I didn't know. The only part of the story that was the same was that Sam was running down the hall when he shouldn't have been. And Chaplain John's thinking, what can I do? I know, there are security cameras in the entryway and the hall. So I'll go and watch the video, see what happens. And when he saw the video, he realised that Jacob's story didn't really fit. And he thought, wow, I wonder what's happening for Jacob that, you know, he's still upset a day later because this is a whole day later. And it, the way Jacob had it in his mind, it was a lot worse than what actually happened. So Chaplain John gets Sam and Jacob together and they watch the video together. And Chaplain John says to Sam... Okay, you apologise for knocking Jacob over. Are you okay to do that? And Sam said, yes, I didn't even realise. I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm sorry I knocked you over and that I didn't stop and take notice. And then Chaplain John has a talk to Jacob and says, Jacob, will you accept his apology and forgive him? Let it go. And Jacob, he'd seen the video and I thought, oh, yeah, okay wasn't as bad as I was thinking. So Jacob accepted the apology and forgave Sam and a little bit of Jacob's heart started to open up. A little bit of happiness started finding its way into his heart again. And so as he left, his step was a little bit lighter and he went to class and by time it was recess, Jacob's happy song was back. He was just enjoying life again and it was really good and he went out for recess and he played with his friends and it was great. So, what happened? Things happen to us. We don't have a lot of control about what happens to us, but we get to choose how we respond. And what Jacob did was he chose to focus on all the yucky, miserable, horrible, hurtful stuff, and it just took him down. It took his happy song away, totally took his happy dance away, everything. When we choose to focus on the miserable, we lose our happiness. But when something bad happens to us and we choose to forgive, then that opens space for the happiness to come back because we let go of the hurt and the pain. Oftentimes we think we have to wait for somebody to come and acknowledge what they've done wrong and forgive us. But that's not what God tells us to do in the Bible. 
Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. So get rid of all the yuckiness. And instead, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. God forgave us thousands of years ago when he died on the cross. He didn't wait for us to acknowledge and apologise. So, when bad things happen to you, just remember, you have a choice. You can just let it get you down and be miserable for who knows how long, or you can forgive the person. Let it go and move on so that you can maintain your happy dance. Okay? All right. Let's pray. God, thank you that you give us the gift of forgiveness. Lord, help us please to be compassionate and gracious and forgiving people so that we can experience the happiness, the joy that you want us to experience. Lord, throughout the rest of the sermon, please just make everybody hear your word. Don't let me get in your way. Thanks, God. We love you. Amen. Thanks, kids. You can go back.